Hello to the World Wide Web, and welcome back to another episode of Group Chat. Each week, we open up with a fun video that each of us created to help you guys get to know us a little bit better. And today, it's my turn. So let's roll the tape. Woo! Yeah, Andrea! Woo! Andrea! <laughs> A little sweet, a little spicy, but I'm all love. They call me sunshine in human form. <laughs> Beauty doesn't last, but swag is forever. Honey, I'm not dimming my life for anybody. Alright everybody, so in an adolescent.net article, an anonymous writer wrote about their anxiety when it comes to living out their sexual fantasies. They said, when planning my goals at the end of 2019, I courageously decided I would embrace my sexuality this year. I thought a lot about how I would communicate my desires to partners and overcome my fear of judgment. So, it made me wonder, how comfortable are you all when it comes to embracing your own sexuality? I'm very open about mine, um, and I've definitely been open about mine for two years. If you're an adult and you pay your own bills, you can express your sexuality any way you want to express it. I think I think when I was younger, I was very much so like, I don't really want to talk about that. I don't really want to discuss that. But the older I get, the more I am passionate about people having control over their own bodies. And so for me, me embracing my sexuality also means I get to decide what I do or don't do. And so that's the space that I've been in. It's been a process for me because I'm, I'm Christian. And so I oftentimes, originally when I was thinking about my sexuality, I would make decisions based off of the teachings of my religion, but not like thinking about what that means about my relationship with God. And so as I get older, I'm now making the decision for myself to make my own choices in regards to my sexuality and choosing to abstain because I want to and not just because I was told to. That's so interesting because for me, whenever I think like sexuality, like because I identify as a gay man, like I always assume it's like, oh, you know, where are you on the LGBTQ spectrum? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I think it's just like, wow. Like I think it's so, it's, it's, it's not just that. So I think that's interesting. I feel like for me, it's been a whole journey. You can probably imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> you know, suburban Michigan, and I grew up with immigrant parents. And I think for me, where I am right now is I do feel like I'm the most open and the most open and comfortable with showing my sexuality. Um, depending on how you define that, I think it's like an, it's a constant process of getting there because, you know, I think that I've had like pressures, whether it's familial or like societal or just growing up where it's something that's very taboo even today. And like, even if it's not, even if it's the most accepting of a landscape in America as ever, you know, who knows if uh, there's some opportunity or there's some kind of judgment from some, you know, whatever that would make it challenging. I know I'm sounding very vague, but ultimately what I'm saying, <laughs> feel a lot more comfortable now more than ever to show it because I do think that we are going towards a direction where you should own who you are and like you said key just like owning your body and your spirit and being able to show that and like not getting chastised for that I think that for me like the sexuality the other kind of definition of it is challenging because i think in the cis gay community it's a it's often an over sexualized community and so that's where it gets like a little bit harder because i think so much of sexuality in terms of like gay sexuality is being like very sexual and that's something that like there are a lot of different directions and a lot of reactions to that and that's something that i'm still trying to wrap my head around like if you think about like grinder culture or like dating apps and i'm sure mm -hmm. that the same case for people who don't identify as gay like, <laughs> just get it can get, just get like kind of messy and transactional and like not mm -hmm. good body and the mind, I think, in some ways. So that's something that I've been thinking about, but I'm done rambling. Well, to build off what you said, Eric, um, I'm somebody who identifies as... I'm having trouble with the label right now, but I guess that's my point. Like, I... Like, when I think of sexuality, at least right now, like, I'm thinking of, like, where am I on the spectrum, I guess? And so, like, for a while, like, I've identified as bi. Right now, I'm just trying to, like, come to terms with not seeking finality in like labels or anything attraction fluctuates and and 
I don't know. I don't really know where I'm going with this, but but I guess my it's point fluid. is yeah, like sexuality is fluid. Yeah, sexuality is fluid. It's um it is a spectrum, and I guess it kind of does tie into like the concept of sexuality, like actual like sex, because people have a choice in how they want to label themselves, and people have a choice in what they do with their body. Like, hookup culture, hypersexualization, fetishization. Ugh fetishization it's it's gross it's not for me there's a lot of power in people just owning their sexuality and and choosing what to do with their own bodies choosing how to label themselves that was not a very articulate explanation but i hope you guys understand what i'm saying yeah no, I, no, I get it katie i definitely get it sexuality is, is fluid and it changes like you change every year that's just humans change we evolve mm -hmm. Just embracing what it looks like at each step of the process I think is so important and that like you said no finality in it because we're always learning more about ourselves. I don't mean to discredit like anybody who does like give themselves a label like if they know that they are like a certain they are like definitely attracted to a certain group of people or they are like a certain way like that is who you are I'm not like taking that away from you I'm just saying for me personally like, I am trying to stray away from labels because I think, like, it harms me. You're not, like, going towards finality yeah. and, yeah. and, like, a fluid. It's a fluid conversation because it's a fluid. Mm -hmm. I love that you shared that, Katie. I love that, that you're so open to sharing that and that you're so young and that you know this now. Like, even me, like, I'm 26 and I struggle with, like, sexuality and, like, feeling like I have to choose one side or the other mm -hmm. when it's, like, no, I like what I like and I'm gonna keep it moving. Even when I told my parents that I was dating a female, my dad was like, I need time. No, you don't need time. This has nothing to do with you. This is my <laughs> relationship. This is my adult yeah, relationship. I don't understand you, What I do in my bedroom has nothing to do with you at this <laughs> yeah. point. Kudos to you, Katie. Thank you for sharing that. I really Thank really you. And that. thank you guys for sharing. Well, now embracing your sexuality doesn't always mean being sexually active. This is my question right here. Late last year, 27-year-old singer Ali Book released her book, Finding Your Harmony. While the book covered many other topics about her life, struggles, and time in the girl group Fifth Harmony, many people focused on her decision to keep her virginity while being in a sexy industry. Why do you guys think our society has placed such a huge emphasis on whether or not a person should wait until marriage? This is an interesting question. I have thoughts. It is. I have thoughts. It is. I have thoughts. I have thoughts. Um, so we, we know that the kind of elephant in the room is that a lot of people are um, use religion to control mm -hmm. rather than to Amen. empower, <laughs> to express love. <laughs> And to you know to do what it was and what it was supposed to do and what it was envisioned for it's been Word. used i mean as a black person i already know it's been used to control people so that's the real reason why people focus so much on wedding until marriage with that being said i am actually somebody who is abstaining until marriage i'm 26 so i would say that sexuality is just as much about what you choose to do with your body as what you choose not to do. For me, as I look around and see how people kind of just like go crazy over whether you should or should not, I believe that sexuality is about choice and being able to choose what you do and when you do it and who you do it with. If that means yeah. expanding, cool. If that means you're gonna have sex, just be safe. Like these are the things that I think about. So what are your thoughts on this? Cause this is a huge topic. I agreed with everything that, that you just said as young adults. I think that we don't always like see that like our body is our temple. I also don't really know. I feel like I don't have much to add, but I think exactly like what you said, Key, like a huge thing is religion. And that's actually something that I can't really speak to because I'm not. Yeah. I don't to you know any like formalized religion but i will say what's interesting though is that like i have friends who have like waited till marriage or like have never had sex and like i literally like just like just found out and they didn't <laughs> know that the truth of the matter is like i would not have assumed that from you key and like but then it's kind of like well why would i why does it matter that i do, yeah. do an assumption yeah. like i feel like that's in a more important question i think that especially in America now, especially for young people, we've done a lot better job of like abstaining from like slut shaming and like, mm -hmm. you know, reclaiming someone's like sex laws, but we don't really consider that that also means like for those who do not practice sex frequently or like whatever you mean. Like, I think because having your virginity or like your V card was like the, like the, 
the right thing to do traditionally. Like there is no claiming that. I feel like that goes on in the same way where it's like, yeah, I'm a hoe and I know it. So I think that's also a, a big influence on why, you know, on the flip side. So mm -hmm. like when I was a little girl, I always thought I was gonna kiss one person, I was gonna have sex with one person, I was gonna get married to one. Like my mom and my, my parents are a little bit more open. So I know my one thing my mom always told me is, you know, if you're in a relationship with somebody, it's always good to test drive the car. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, I don't want to go into a, a committed uh. a life partner, life relationship. Because for me, I, I mean, at least for me, like, I know that I'm, I'm known as this, like, free spirit. So I think for me that, like, sex is important in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And it is a way to connect with somebody. I did go about this year. I was like, hmm, I'm going to be celibate. If I'm going to do it, like, who am I doing it for? That's an activity that I enjoy. I'm being safe. Like, I'm safe about it, right? So, like, but and I'm also adult. And I have that, like, right to do. Like, I'm not a freak. But I'm just saying, like, as, as the free <laughs> spirit of the group. Even if you were, it is your choice. Knowing the reason behind the choice is so important. And that's really why I got to a space in a, as an adult where I was like, okay, let me make sure that I know the reason why I'm choosing to abstain. And that helps me to renew my commitment yeah. to myself and to God. Not even a conversation about whether you were a freak or not, which <laughs> whatever that means anyway, like what? You know, or were you a virgin, whatever that means. Because yeah. people have different definitions of that anyway. And so just knowing that you make the choice for yourself and, and it's about your relationship with yourself and who, who, whomever you deem to be divine or whomever you answer to. And if that's only you, then cool. Although there's like, we're not like that far apart from each other in terms of age, but I feel like my generation or like the younger side of our generation is like actually focused on having sex and like owning sexuality in that way. My experience, like, all of high school was like, if you're not doing it, like you're missing out. Honestly, in my opinion, like virginity is like a social construct. Your life doesn't change. That's just something that you do. It can be like some revolutionary, th like it's important in relationships. It's important in many different contexts, but in terms, like in the grand scheme of your life, like you, you shouldn't like let that drive you like as a young person like there's so much outside of that area of my life that i want to do you own it like it's your choice if you want to participate if you don't want to participate like people think that sexuality is like all about participating and owning yourself in that way but like the flip side is like equally as valid and people don't understand that at least in my experience okay our <laughs> pandemic <laughs> <hookups> are <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> agree <laughs> Agree. They're not worth the risk. Don't do it. Where did you first learn about the birds and the bees? I can't say that I remember because I don't remember having a conversation with my parents about it. I just remember knowing really early on that I wanted to <laughs> that I wanted to have sex when I got married. Don't ask me why. <laughs> really, I just remember saying I remember saying that as a young person, not like a grown up or nothing. So, not really sure exactly where I learned, but somebody told. So what's something you once believed about sex that you learned isn't true, that you're always going to like it? Because I don't always like it. <laughs> but that goes along with like your connection with that person. So, and that again, that I would have sex with one person for the rest of my life, but I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. So we're <laughs> going to move on. <laughs> now going back to our little Fifth Harmony example, while <laughs> Alan Brooke is saving her sexy, this past year, other celebrities and everyday people took to the internet to jump on the OnlyFans money train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think an OnlyFans career should be in people's five-year plan? I definitely thought about it, but I did not. Um, I have friends that are doing it and are making money, but I mean, to each its own. If you're out here making your income, like if you need a part-time income, people have more time on their hands with the quarantine and the pandemic, make your bread how you want to make it. Like, I'm not going to tell you how to make your money if it's illegal, you know? Yeah. So do your thing. Yeah. Capitalize. If that's, that's you, do you. Again, like back to what we were literally just saying, like it doesn't have to be in everybody's five-year plan. I think if you are doing it, like make your money, who, like, who cares? Yeah, definitely don't think it should be in everybody's. Uh, <laughs> five year, that's not maybe not five year plan. 
And this is why this is why I say saying everybody should do something is just ridiculous. That's like yeah. you know what I mean. Like it's just not. It wouldn't make sense for everybody to do because if everybody did it, let's think practically. We would all. If everybody rich. did it. Then, yeah. what, then what would be the the whole reason why people like really really like on OnlyFans is because of the risqueness of you know of it. Mm. And if it's not risque anymore, if people like me get on there and be like. I'm here on OnlyFans to tell you about my journey of not having sex. Then everybody gonna be like, well, what the heck? what's the point of the show? You know what I mean? Like, now, originally, I don't think it was intended to be that type of platform, but True. it is now, and it doesn't make sense for everybody to get on there. Granted, you could, I could get on there and just be on there like, it's my face. How y'all doing today? Love and light, you know, what I usually do on my Instagram, but yeah. Yeah. I got Instagram. So it's like, I'm gonna leave that platform for people that that are in sex work. True, and that's actually that's actually something that I do think that like, on a more like macro scale, I feel like theoretically maybe I would be against it because yeah, like we're hearing all this news about how like Bella Thorne and Michael B. Jordan, but I just think that like, this is a platform that's supposed to be like for normal people. And I think a lot of the criticism that I do think can kind of be like traced to slut shaming actually about like the Bella Thorne situation was just that she was like mm. taking that was supposed to be for normal people and now it's like she's a celebrity she's gonna like whatever which i don't think is like that bad but i do mm -hmm. think that like for people who depend on this kind of industry for their like livelihood i do think that is like a little unfortunate that people are just able to yeah. that being yeah. said i also don't like i hope that i don't have to depend on my livelihood on like someone wanting to see my like private parts and i think it depends really like on like who you are and what you are mm -hmm. in who you are in your body i have i have friends who are on and it's like yeah like you know they said these kind of slightly microaggressive things but it's like they're also giving like truly a shit ton of money an absurd amount of money i still don't get it so it's just kind of like where like where does it break even like where do you draw the line for me i feel lucky that i haven't had to like think about that as someone who um <laughs> wants to go into the entertainment industry like maybe that's not the smartest thing to do right yeah. now i agree with you eric I would also just like to add that, like, I think, like, we should respect people who want to, excluding, like, people who are already, like, rich. If people are already making, like, a stable income and, like, want to do they this on the side, like, if, even if they're not depending on this for the livelihood, I think it's, like, still a valid, like, choice to That's make. True. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. But the one thing, too, is that unless you have some baby face, you're not gonna look the same in five years, right? So check this, yeah. like evolution. Like Eric said something that like <laughs> really like stuck stuck in my head. It really stuck in my head. You were like, you know, the fact that that you know people have to depend on this. Like your life changes in like five years. It could change in a year. So who's to say you're gonna even look like that? What if you get pregnant and your body changes, or like you just look different? Like it's not gonna be be the same content. And as humans, and like we're constantly evolving. Like who's to say that? We won't, I mean, we're always gonna have social media to some extent, but like, who's to say like, what's gonna be the next thing? Like OnlyFans is gonna run out until like something new comes along, right? I don't think they didn't necessarily always use it to like be like private or naked. Like I do think people are on there like have some like weird fantasies and fetishes. I think they do that too. Or like, I feel like some people just may like cook. Like I don't necessarily think it's like sex. And I think that like, maybe that might be the connotation too, that people make OnlyFans about sex, but I think it's just, content that you would pay for but even then people have close friends like i know i utilize my close friends for you know things i may want people that aren't my co-workers or like my close friends to see like what i do and maybe not my whole like tl or like my friends list so mm -hmm. it's it, i think it's all about just capitalizing on what you do in your private time but i like i said make your bag don't let it make you that's it <laughs> <laughs> oh i actually like how you said that yeah yeah i'm getting that tattooed yeah. right here Oh, well, I, mean, I, got it make you. From a movie. I got it from a movie. I got yeah, it from, it's from player a movie. Club. Player's yeah, Club. Player's That's, Club. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, had to had to slip that in. As always, it's so much fun getting to hang with everybody. And for everybody watching, we want you to join in too. So tell us what you think in the comments below. And remember to like and share today's episode with your group chat. Let's keep the conversation going. Plus, don't forget to click the bell and subscribe to Adolescent's YouTube channel so you won't miss out on our next episode or any new content dropping soon. Thanks for logging in into the group chat. Until next time, TTYL.